What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room week eight of the APA. The San Francisco Giantes are team building for Gator and the Florida Gators. You can see the six Pokemon I'm bringing over there. I will talk about them in just a minute. And we've got the 11 drafted Mons that Gator has above my head here. So let's talk about those real quick. So once again, we're looking at a double fairy team, which is unfortunate. No Feeny, which is nice because it means that that. I can still bring Dragon Stab on Mons if I want to uh, because I'm not worried about the Misty Terrain completely ruining that for me but I do need to be careful because there are two fairies and of course they're both very fast uh, and both could very easily be pretty offensive if they wanted to be so and he also has Mamoswine which is like the ultimate fail safe against Dragon Dance teams so I had to get creative with this one sort of uh, I I didn't invest a massive, nowhere near as much time as I normally do in team building for this. Because uh, to be honest, this Dragon Gym, it's very hard to win with. And its it's been a fun experience for me. It's taught me a lot. Uh, but it's, you know, gyms are hard enough to win with when the opponent doesn't know what you could possibly bring or what gym you're going to be. But when they know your gym, uh, they kind of have your... They kind of have your number a little bit there. So once again, trying to introduce some elements that might be a surprise and see if I can get him to make a mistake or two and carry that with some uh, end game potential for me. So that's that was my thought process going into this team builder. And I made this team, this these six Pokemon based on the assumptions that I'm making above about what he's likely to bring. So on the top row, this is just, I honestly cannot envision a scenario in which he does not bring these three. That's Tapu Koko, Whimsicott, and Mamoswine. On the next row, we have Pokemon who I think are very powerful uh, and have a very significant purpose in a matchup against me. And that would be Landorus Eye, Manaphy, and Mega Steelix. And the next row, Pokemon that could be brought for very significant utility could, uh, if not prepared for correctly, could be a problem, uh, but not necessarily as likely a bring as the two rows above it. And that's Miss Magius, Scallopede, and Umbreon. Probably not in that order, to be honest. Umbreon probably swaps with Miss Magius. Uh, Miss Magius is one of those. I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, and then the last row we have Wobbuffet and Polyrath. And so. Let's think this through. Even as I'm looking at these tiers, I do want to point out that just because they're kind of tiered this way does not mean that there's not a reason to bring some of these mons. Polyrath, I don't really see a reason for it, to be perfectly honest. The typing doesn't give him a whole lot of benefits. Yes, it learns Ice Punch, and so it, it could do something with that, an Ice Beam and all that. Uh, it could be the, like like a Whirlpool Trap set or something like that. But those are the type of Mons that kind of go one for one. Looking at this matchup, trying to get in his head, how would he be building against me? I started with the top three, the assumption of the top three. That's all the offense he needs. Like he doesn't need anything else, but they all have, like I can build to their weaknesses and some of them are shared, like Coco and Whimsicott, of course, both being fairy, both weak to poison. Um, it wouldn't work, of course, to just slap uh, steel on them for coverage, because then, of course, the part typing on um, on Coco makes that uh, irrelevant. And I couldn't slap Earthquake to hit Coco and expect it to also cover Whimsicott. But for the most part, poison will cover them both. Uh, and there's a lot of neutral hits that could do well with secondary typing on some of my mons. So we're pretty much good there. Mamoswine is so ludicrously powerful. So Coco, looking at Coco, thinking uh, very possible to be a Z-mon. It doesn't need help with its speed. Uh, a nuke would allow it to get through if I had an answer for it. As it turns out, I don't really have much for it, but if he wanted... Uh, a Z-move would help him break through something like that, and then he's just got speed control and advantage with that Mon and can uh, carry it spamming Dazzling Gleam or something to victory. So that was my thoughts on Coco. Likely to be a Z-Mon, but it could always just be, you know, he's happy enough with the speed and let's just band it or, or specs it or 
Life Orb, I, I think, is a little less useful in draft format than normal because it's uh, it's an item that gives away its item really early. Uh, so and you have less, t you have fewer turns to scout in a draft meta. So I, I've found in general Life Orb is less used, but there's not no reason for it. Speaking of Life Orb, the next two mons are very likely Life Orb users themselves. So Whimsicott. The thing about Whimsicott is I, do, I don't have a reliable switch in for it. It naturally outspeeds my team. A very little reason for it to click anything other than Fairy Stab. The two mons I have uh, that are my neutral to Fairy mons are Turtonator, and Turtonator can't survive two. Um, and Whimsicott uh, learns Psychic, so Dragology is not necessarily super safe against it either. So with, uh, with Fairy Psychic coverage, it could then feel free to run a support move in the other slots, maybe Defog, maybe Tailwind, um, maybe Sleep Powder, Toxic, if it just kind of feels like it. It can kind of do any of those like supporty prankster mon things in the others, but because it's got the speed already, it could just go specs because there's I, there's not a reason to not click Moonblast. Like we do safe clicks in Pokemon all the time. Like it's too hard to really know at this stage of the game what my opponent's gonna do. I'll just click a safe move. Okay, Moonblast. It's gonna hit everything. So uh, that's kind of why I assume it's gonna go particularly offensive, and th those are probably the better options for it if he really wants to. Uh, double down or triple down on Dragon Dance defense against my team, then he could scarf it too. That would also be fine, because then it would take me two Dragon Dances with any of my mons to really get the the one up on it. For Mammoth Swine, um, could I mean there could be a lot of things for Mammoth Swine actually. It's it's kind of it's gonna kind of depend, and I'll I'll learn a lot by whether or not he leads with it. If he leads with it, could be Rock's lead, um, which is. You know, it's very safe again to just click ice against this team. So if he wants to pressure right out the gate with a stab that hits everything, he could just lead with Mammoth Swine, threaten the ice move, and then he could introduce the element of, well, will I click Stealth Rocks or will I click Ice Stab? So uh, there's that option. He could go Scarf. That would be if he wants to turn Mammoth Swine into a mid game like Revenger. Because um, then he could, anytime he could any of his Pokemon dies, he could just revenge with a Scarfed Mammo with Icicle Crash or something like that. Um, but I think that's less valuable than, say, a Life Orb or Banded set uh, that he doesn't bring out in the mid game. He sits on it in case I set up, then he's got a fail save versus Dragon Dancers with like a just a Banded Ice Shard or something like that to really kind of um, capture that weakness. Uh, from my team. So I think that one's probably more likely. And I know that um, Gator really likes Life Orb Mammo. Uh, Life Orb Adamant Mammo. So very possible that he's that he's stuck in that. Could, I mean, it could be both the first thing and the last thing I said. It could be like a, a Stealth Rock lead with Life Orb uh, Adamant Mammo. Something like that. So I'm kind of looking at those as being really high likelihood of, of brings almost certainty uh, almost certain that he brings those mods and I kind of prepared my team around that assumption so and then had to look into well what what supports those mods what's a good addition to those mods Manaphy is good because there's very little crossover and weaknesses there's grass weakness with the Mamoswine but if you look at the rest of his team bar the Polyrath that's not coming grass isn't really gonna do much for me so it's forcing me, if I want coverage for Manaphy, to bring moves that I'd really rather not bring. And Manaphy being a base 100, it's not like I can surprise it and then Oko it with those things anyway. It's too bulky even if it's not, even if it's a fully offensive set. So I kind of have to prepare for the Manaphy even though, you know, it's not necessarily the, the centerpiece of what would be effective against my team. Uh, but it's a threat. It's a massive threat, and I need to have answers for it littered throughout the the roster. Even though water's not particularly good against my squad either, it does learn Ice Beam. Um, I think I can't remember whether or not it learns Dazzling Gleam. I'm pretty sure it does, but let's just really quickly verify that. I had it on my notes, but I can't open my notes because they're on this screen, and that's the one that 
my recording is pulling from. So let's see. Uh, it does learn Dazzling Gleam too. So coverage wise, very little reason for him to not bring Manaphy, both because of its excellent typing, uh, just water, solid. Um, it's really, it's pretty bulky, it's pretty powerful, it can boost against me, can be incredibly annoying as a Mon, so I, I think there's a good likelihood that that comes. Probably, you know, we'll do a little reordering here. I, I, I don't really, I usually do it by rows, not like one, two, three, but it's, it's important to me that we do this to signify that I really think that Manaphy provides him uh, a lot in this matchup. So I think that, I think that he comes. There, so we'll do, we'll do that. We'll do that. Just because it, it makes me happy. Uh, so let's talk Landorus. Landorus next. Powerful, good speed tier. The only thing on my squad that outspeeds it naturally is Latios. Uh, great move pool options. Um, could be a rocker. Good setup options. Could go physical or special. Could play some weird uh, sand force games alongside the um, the Steelix. Not a bad scarfer option for him if he just wants again fail safes against me boosting my speed for one way or another. Uh, just a very high tier powerful Pokemon and so value in it for that value in it for its support reasons uh, both between rocks and tailwind things like that the Steelix and the Umbreon in theory could be interchangeable but here's why I think Steelix because he knows I have to bring Dragalge because that's my only thing that I have really my only effective mod to help me out against Fairy. So he knows I have to bring Dragology, and so I think he brings, um, I think he brings Mega Steelix just because it's a pretty decent switch into Dragology. I, I, I have packed some things based on the assumption that that would be an answer for him, but I think it's a, a really good bring for that regard. It can just hit me hard with uh, with Heavy Slam and can be quite a nuisance for that reason. Another potential Stealth Rocker for him. Bulky enough that it can just be coming in and hopping out when it kind of feels like it. Uh, we'll transition that into talking about Umbreon actually because Umbreon's just so annoying uh, to deal with. I don't really have boosting mons on this squad. We'll get into my brings in a minute, but Foul play is a great answer for Dragon Dancers because after like one Dragon Dance, a lot of those mons put themselves in foul play KO range, put themselves there. Uh, and But Umbreon is so bulky that it's difficult for me to then turn around and KO him back. Even two hit KOs are pretty, pretty problematic actually. So that could be a challenge. So I, Umbreon, I think, kind of interchangeable with Steelix and if he wants to go two very safe defensive mons for switchings he could bring both maybe Umbreon over the Landers for example. Scully is if he's going for a more offensive build I'll have to look at what he's doing with that. It's not like super amazing against my team but it I mean it it's faster than Latios and learns Bug Stab, so that could be useful just if he wants more specifically a Latios check. And he could speed past to something and turn that into his sweeper that takes the game. Like maybe he, I don't know, bans the Mamoswine, gets it a speed boost behind a sub, passes the Mamoswine, and the Mamoswine just tries to sweep me with, with Ice Stab. I mean, you know, you can... Scallopede... It does what it does, right? And we're in a, a league where speed passing is allowed. It can set itself up. It's got decent offense. It's got a pretty good move pool. It's got options, which is why I have it on the third tier. But it, in and of itself, as one Pokemon, looking at my team, not the not the best matchup for it. So I don't know that I think I'm like super sure that it'll come, but if he's looking at bringing it, it's probably because the team build he's got in mind is a little bit more focused around um, offense and per potentially setting up and winning. Uh, could also bring it for its hazards if he wants to hazard stack against me. 
Next we have Miss Magius. Miss Magius learns Icy Wind and Dazzling Gleam, so and has good speed tier. So for that reason, it could possibly come just from the viewpoint of being a decent, fast offensive mon. Not a ton of reason to bring it other than that. Um, its special bulk isn't awful. Potential as like a surprise assault vest. I, I don't really see what else. Uh, Ms. Magius is a little one-dimensional, and so in a draft league format, trying to make it not one-dimensional, it's not impossible, but there's not a ton for it. Well, that's it. I have it on the bottom because is in terms of what it brings to the team, it's not a ton, but let me emphasize this very highly. While Buffett is the type of mon you bring to do the one thing that it does, and it does it ludicrously well. So, while Buffett, if he wants to bring it, he brings it. That's how Wabuffet works. It's not like, oh, you know what would counter that? Wabuffet. No. If you want to bring Wabuffet, you bring Wabuffet, and it will do what it does. It will trap something. Uh, you can wait until there's an opportunity for a mon that, you know, you've scouted it, you know what's going on with it, you know it can't beat Wabuffet, you bring Wabuffet in against it, and Wabuffet will 1v1 it. That's what it does. That's its. That's the whole game with Wabuffet. So, at any given time, if he's like, that would be the way that I handle this, well, Buffett comes. That's just, that's how it is. So I didn't put it higher because in terms of likelihood that he brings it or being brought for a reason, it's lower just because it's not like, look at a dragon team. You know what would be the dragon team? Well, Buffett. No, it just, it could beat Amon and maybe even two if I'm underprepared for it. So it could come, um, but it's really just, you know, if he brings it, I think actually I'm going to, I'm going to say it's a sign of disrespect. <laughs> I think he's just disrespecting me. Like I'm going to wall buff it on this guy. Um, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a very high potential for going one for one. Um, and if I have no answers for it at all and can't weaken it enough, then maybe it takes two with it. And then that's a, an amazing bring for him. So, uh, we'll see. Gator's a got a uh, great vision for how a game plays out so he sits on win cons incredibly well and so if he sees an opportunity with well buffett he could definitely take advantage of it well y you gotta have good um multi-turn uh, game iq to really use well buffett well and gator is someone who could do it so definitely could come but i don't see it from a draft team building perspective as providing him with options and then the last one is Polyrath. Uh, has ice coverage, so it could be brought for that reason, but I don't see a ton of reason for it to be brought. Okay, that's my thought process for his entire team. Here's what I'm bringing. Remix, of course. Uh, Scarf again. I was considering not Scarf this time because I was like, oh, I have to surprise him, uh, but I need it um, because of a different I'm going to surprise him strategy. Uh, his HP is going to be HP Ice because potential mons with hidden power that I'd like to be able to take advantage of would be the uh, Landorus and he's weak to ice and also there is not an impossible chance that he has hidden power on um, Tapu Koko and a switch into Tapu Koko could be his Whimsicott and so he'd hit that. Whimsicott I guess could have it too and it'd be super effective against that too. So I just didn't see any other option that would be better than that. Uh, going back to the beginning, Poisony Boy, all an incredibly similar, maybe even identical set just with different EVs to what I brought last week. I don't really see how I can not bring this um, against a team that has access to Dazzling Gleam and Moonblast. It's the only option I have to switch into those. Nothing else can handle like a Specs Moonblast from the uh, Whimsicott, like nothing. And so I really need something for it. Draco Meteor, Sludge Wave, Scald, and Focus Blast. Draco and Sludge Wave just because uh, we know how adaptability works and it can make those incredibly powerful. Sometimes even better just hitting neutral or sometimes even resisted it's just so powerful scald is their potential to uh grab some burns it's super effective against the mega steelix and it would be great to get a burn on it um i outspeed it um put a couple of evs in there just to kind of speed creep it a little bit maybe i could have done a few more but i wanted to be as bulky as possible since i am an assault vest and 
the point of Dragology is not to counter Steelix, it's to counter the only mons in this game that can spam um, fairy stab against me, or fairy coverage instead. So I really wanted it to be bulky, and if he chooses to go a hyper speedy Steelix, then he, he will outspeed me, I guess. Focus Blast is there because it's even more powerful, so if I'm put into a situation where I only get one click and Scald's not going to do it, I have Focus Blast for it as well. Uh, and it's also good against the Umbreon, um, so I really want something for that. Dragology is not particularly threatened by the foul play from the Umbreon. Umbreon can't toxic me, so I wanted to have something to hit the Umbreon pretty hard, and that would be Focus Blast. Uh, it's not an ideal 1v1 for me because he can probably still stall me out just with Wish Protects um, and he will whittle me down eventually with the um, foul play if he opted to go that route. Moving on, we have the blue one, another choice Scarfer, Psychic, Draco Meteor, Surf, and Ice Beam gives me pretty good coverage against almost everything. Psychic to hit KOs the Coco. Um, Ice Beam one hit KOs the Whimsicott, Surf or Draco both have a chance, not a guarantee, at one hit KOing the Mamoswine depending on its set. Um, I don't have an amazing options for coverage with Latios against the Manaphy. Uh, Psychic has a chance to two hit KO it, but if it's running a particularly defensive set or if it has Calm Mind, obviously that's not going to work. Uh, Draco Meteor would be the hardest thing I could hit it for other than that. Uh, the Ice Beam will Oko the Landorus. The Surf will uh, not Oko, but will do a massive chunk to the Steelix. Draco would probably be my click against the Miss Magius, but of course, because I might not want to get locked into it, Psychic will two hit KO it as well. Psychic will one hit KO the Scolipede. Uh, I don't really have anything for the Umbreon, so it's a great switch in against the Latios. I uh, don't really have anything for the Wabuffet either in Psychic for the... Um, Polyrath. One thing I'm considering, and I might change that on the fly right now, while Draco is good, it's too easy for him to take advantage of it like even if i do get a kill with it if he has wall buffet wall buffet comes in and will just take me out after that and can get plenty of setup it obviously baits in two mons i don't want to bait in and most of the time i would click it psychic would two hit ko instead so i'm actually going to make this defog so that was the last minute swap out um cool yeah looking good uh as far as uh, EVs, uh, I went modest because I don't have a chance to Oko the Mamoswine if I'm timid. So I wanted at least the opportunity to do that. So I opted to go for modest. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is if he scarfs any of his faster mon uh, and also speed caps them, then they will outspeed me. He has a bunch all the way up to base 100s and a timid or jolly base 100 will outspeed a modest base 110 so that's it's it's a risky move for me but i think it's worth it because mammoth swine's such a huge threat and i would really like the extra power to be able to take him on moving on we have gramps we have another assault vester uh and he is running berserk considered sap sipper don't think i need it don't think he's going to be putting grass coverage on the whimsicott hyper voice focus blast Fire Blast and Thunder. Focus Blast will hit the Mamoswine, the Steelix, and the Umbreon. Fire Blast will hit the um, Scolipede, the Whimsicott, and also the Mega Steelix again. Thunder, because it will be boosted by the power of the Electric Terrain, and it will uh, be an amazing option for me against the Manaphy. Uh, for whom Gramps is actually a pretty decent switch in. Hyper Voice is also just a safe click for me there. And Berserk, if I get brought down to the weakness, having that uh, additional boost in power would be great. Running a very bulky set. Again, one of the things I'd considered here was trying to 
get myself to outspeed the Umbreon. That would have taken uh, like 200 and something EVs and would really have neutered a lot of the physical, sorry, a lot of the defensiveness that I had available to me. And so I elected not to do that. Bromo, oh, I changed whether or not I was bringing this mon like four times. I kept switching it out with Salamence. I thought Salamence would be a great switch into the Steelix uh, and having access to the Intimidate could be cool. Could also be good against the Scallopede. But ultimately, I thought um, this would be a better move for me. I can survive an ice attack because I'm defensive enough on this thing from the Mamoswine. And I really, I think I truly need the very powerful fighting type stab coverage for the Umbreon because while I do have uh, like a focus blast here and there, I don't have a reliable Umbreon answer right now. Komo'o needs to be that answer. Even though a lot of things on this team are, would be just fine handling with the Komo'o, Komo'o has a lot of setup options, uh, you know, between uh, Dragon Dance, belly drumming sets, potentially running Autonomize, it can run Iron Defense, like a lot of different setup options for Bromo'o here. So I think he will need to kind of, he'll need to have me show him first what I am before he really knows what's a good answer for Bromo'o. But I'm running Close Combat Poison, Jab, Thunder Punch, Stealth Rock. Thunder Punch... Um, not sold on it. Stealth Rock, I think, could potentially be very important. Like, if I don't see the Umbreon, I have enough answers for the Steelix, even though it's useful to have fighting coverage for that thing as well. And it's great to have it for the Mamoswine, for someone whom I outspeed, even if it's Scarfed. I like all of that, but I think Stealth Rock could be more important in those circumstances. A lot of things are just fine to switch in against this mon, actually. Close Combat Poison Jab will do just fine against the fairies. It'll do well, it'll do very well against four, five of the eight most likely brings that he's got. But unfortunately, I don't really have anything for the Landorus Eye. And so if he knows that, then he could switch in relatively freely against me. I don't believe I have the ability to two-hit KO it. Close Combat's best thing I've got for the Manaphy. Um, the Miss Magius, I don't really have anything for it. Thunder Punch has the chance to two-hit KO it. I don't really have anything for the Scallopede. I don't really have anything for the Wabuffet. So you can see that Romo'o can be walled, but it's a specialist for this team. I need it to be able to take on the Umbreon. I need it uh, as a potential fail-safe for the Mamoswine, and a Scarfed Poison Jab might catch the fairies off guard, so it's for that as well. And then the last mon, I feel like you guys already know, it's an Assault Vester, so my team is three Assault Vesters and three Scarfers, and that's my big element for this game, <laughs> because building this team, uh, I was looking at it, I just think he has too many answers to set up. I, tr I really, I built in my mind, I was like, what if I tried to set up this way? Uh, nope, this would this would counter that. What if this was my move? What if uh, Memento Latios uh, behind screens into a Yachi Berry Salamence? I, I just couldn't get it. To, there was always a scenario that I could envision in which this wouldn't work. Like it would take me too many turns to get the setup against the Wall Buffet, for example. Or he could just come in and he could Ice Shard with this and then uh, KO with this. There's There was just too much to it. I couldn't see uh, an end game opportunity that came from the setup, uh, from a setup mon. I need all of my mons to be basically, basically this is my whole setup here is I've just got a bunch of assault vesters because most of his team is not physical. And the goal is the assault vesters, you're playing the mid game, you're weakening, you're removing things until I see an end game opportunity in which Remix, Bromo'o, or the blue one can sweep with their scarves. That's how I've looked at this. Uh, so any of them could be the ones that do it. And I'm really just gonna have to play mid game with my bulky mons, kind of swapping them around until I get there. 
One thing I considered in an alternative to Kurem's AV setup was uh, the potential of being a sub roost set, but he's got too many mons that are uh, that outspeed Kurem actually. In fact, there's very few who don't. As, uh, as far as the mons that he would be bringing, the only ones that don't outspeed Kurem would be the Mammoth Swine, which has a priority that's super effective against me, and the Steelix. And so, yeah, also there's the Umbreon, I guess, but I... This isn't my Umbreon answer, uh, but it's a pretty good switch into it. And I... I see more value in Curum being Assault Vest as another switch into a Fairy Spam than I see it for anything else. And so I went with Draco, Ice Beam, Earth Power, and Focus Blast. The Draco, I didn't really know what else. I have everything I need on this as far as um, coverage wise. And most of the time you just click Ice Beam with this. He doesn't have amazing ice beam switch ins so i think there's going to be a lot of like trading and as far as like you're going to trade a hit with me i'm going to trade a hit with you assault vest felt like the best way for me to do that so that was the uh, that's the that's the whole team this has been a long this is funny whenever i'm like my back's against the wall i think this is a bad matchup i always take longer in my uh team building videos and i'm not sure why that is maybe i'm just like Guys, I, I got nothing, but here's what I thought I got. Uh, maybe I just find find that to be beneficial. So enjoy your 31 minute video. Sorry this didn't go up on Friday, guys. Um, all of this is just happening on Saturday. We're, do, we're knocking everything out right now. So let me know if you had any uh, other ideas or suggestions and leave them for me in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys later.